Well, we're in the engine compartment of a very, very special guest today. Um, 1963 Dodge Max Wedge. This thing is a real deal. It's not something that's been moused around with. It's not something that's been played with. Uh, it's in its original state, and we're going to go over everything on it and show it to you. Uh, underneath the hood, which, by the way, when we say hood, Mopar cut these out just to save weight so there's no bracing through the center, but also you could install from them uh, a scoop. It had like two separate scoops. Actually, it was one scoop, but it had a narrow area in the center and two wider open areas on the end. But you could install that on here for a ram air effect and, and uh, lose the air cleaners. And then they offered velocity stacks with screens in them that would mate up to the uh, hood area for a uh, ram air cold air effect. Supposedly gave you another 5-6 horsepower on top of a substantial 215 or 215, 415 already. This particular motor is the um, uh, low compression motor according to Chrysler at that point in time. It's an 11 and a half to 1 motor. Uh, the high compression race only was 13 and a half to 1 squeeze, which was a lot of compression. There are very few cars out there today that run that compression. The engine itself is the correct 426 wedge motor that this car came with. Uh, it doesn't appear to have ever been repainted. The uh, uh, decals on the uh, valve pan covers are faded and, and worn, but they're there, and they are the original covers. These are the original air cleaners that came with it. Can't see them, but underneath here is a pair uh, stagger mounted of uh, Carter AFB carburetors. They flowed right around 550 uh, cubic feet per minute air volume pretty substantial air volume for this little guy to take if you want to call 426 cubic inches little. The exhaust manifolds are the correct casting cast iron exhaust manifolds. Um, very rare items to find and when you see the undercarriage you'll see they have a set of dumps that was standard equipment with these vehicles. These vehicles were a race vehicle. They were manufactured by Chrysler to compete in sanctioned drag racing. And that's what they did, and they did it very, very well. They were king of the hill for quite a few years when they released this. Correct style, style radiator that came with it, the correct style hoses. Uh, everything on this vehicle is as it was from Mopar in 1963. Inner fender panels are uh, uh, the same color as the car. They don't appear to have ever been molested or touched in any way. does have the original fender tag still intact here on the top of the left front fender. New battery with a shut off for you so that you can, when you're not using this, it's not going to be a daily usage car for sure. <clears throat> but you can uh, shut the battery off without just disconnecting it physically. Original horn still intact on it. The original decal still on top of the uh, radiator core support, which still retains its numbers and its no hit body. It still is the original radiator core support. Uh, does have the original heater hoses still hooked up also. Uh, so the early cars, the heater hoses went over onto the driver's side, looped around, and went into the uh, firewall. Later cars, they went into the uh, passenger side. Um, it does have the original seven blade steel fan. It's not a flex fan, it's, the, uh, it's a steel fan that uh, uh, Mopar used on these vehicles. Single stage master cylinder. That's what they used back in 1963. Uh, certainly not a safety item uh, concern. It somehow managed to stop itself for pretty close to 60 years now, but um, it does have the original single stage as opposed to a dual stage master cylinder, which would be a lot safer. Has a set of high silicone plug wires, original Presto Light distributor, cast iron housing, dual point distributor that these guys were released with. The original style fuel lines, the way they loop around with the uh, uh, filters, one filter for each carburetor. Everything in this engine compartment shows itself originality. It's very, very difficult to find a car like this that has been unmolested, but there's one here. Again, a, a race type motor <clears throat> that they managed to put into a regular production vehicle. What makes this one even more rare is the fact that it's a Player 500. Most of these engines were ordered in a real light two-door 
post coupe to save weight. This guy doesn't. This thing is uh, in a high end, at that point in time, the highest end car that Dodge did release. Again, if you look at this engine compartment, which Devin's going to give you some good high resolution videos or pictures of, in addition to a video, uh, you'll see that the engine appears to be completely original paint. There's a little bit missing on the one cylinder head here, paint wise. It's chipped off, and there's little chips on it here and there. It's not a perfectly painted show quality engine, but it retains originality, and that's what's important with this guy. Very, very rare PC equipment, and we're going to show you the rest of it. Hi, you're Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida, and today our really special guest, we have a 1963 Polara 500 Max Wedge car, cross ram, big exhaust manifolds, race engine for 1963. Nobody went around this guy in 1963. If it was a 409 Chevy, it was back there. If it was a Ford, it was back there. This guy was out front. There was no question about it. You can check the records, you'll see that nothing uh, uh, really went past the Max Wedge for quite a few years. They opened them up, came up with them in uh, 1962 as a 413, only year they made a 413 in a Max Wedge. And in 63, they came out with the Stage 2 and Stage 3, which is what this guy is. Um, very rare car. And it's an original car. The paint on this car is original. Not a repaint, not touched up. This car has originality. And we're going to go over it and show it all to you and then explain things to you at the very end. You can see that the hood fitment is just as sweet and nice as you'd ever want it to be. For 1963, it's amazing that this car has this kind of originality. Paint worn off on the edges here from working on the car, leaning over it through the years. Worn off on the hood on the edge here. Clean down to the uh, bare metal that, as long as we keep it waxed, it's not going to rust. No dents or deviations or, or warpage whatsoever in the hood anywhere. All original paint. Uh, paint mark here where someone has made an attempt to brush touch a uh, stone chip. The original Chrysler uh, um, Dodge emblem on the very nose of it here. Same thing here, some paint worn. Paint worn over here. Fitment of the hood to the uh, driver's side fender, the same as the other one, and up to the collar. And you can just see that it is just so well fitted for 1963. It's just totally amazing. A uh, little bit of a, you could polish things out to chrome if you wanted to. My suggestion is you leave them alone because that's originality. That's the way it came. Anodization on the grill is all really, really nice. Some light scratches you can see from, again, through the years working on this guy. Changing plugs, tuning the carburetors. Uh, but the grill itself doesn't have any dents or marks whatsoever in it other than these light scratches, which you're not even going to see in this video, but I'm telling you, they're there. Uh, again, the same thing. You could polish this uh, aluminum basil out, but it wouldn't be original. Filler panel, unpainted silver, just the way it was in 1963. Uh, bumper fitment is really, really nice on both sides. The fit is really nice uh, vertically and laterally, both. A little dingy in the bumper right here. I don't know what happened there. Maybe Dad's crowbar fell against it or something, but there's a very, very slight ding um, in the chrome there. Bumper guards in the front, that was an option. Chrome on the front of the bumper, really nice, 1963 plate on the front. Uh, the bumper chrome itself, there's, uh, again, through the years, just from usage, I'm sure at some point somebody put their foot up here, you can see some light, light scratches in the chrome. The chrome itself is not worn out, it does, however, have some original type scratches through the years for some reason. Uh, again, you can look at the fitment of this thing, it's just absolutely exemplary. Uh, the hood fits just as it should. It's never been bumped. Uh, the bumper fits as, a, as it should in 1963. Bumperettes in the front. Anodized grill is nice as you'd ever want to find. Again, there's some wear on this vehicle, and I'm pointing out everything that I can see, and some of it you'll be able to see. Paint is original on this car. No one painted this car. A couple brush touches here, probably from a belt buckle through the years changing the plugs on this side. Kind of hard to get to with those ram exhaust manifolds. Um, front end of this car is just as nice as you'd ever want to find. 1963, uh, real iconic car for Dodge. Let's do the driver's side, see what we can show you there. Driver's side. 
paint on this car is so nice for being original. It's, it's really, look, original tint everywhere. You'll see when we do the undercarriage. There is no rust, absolutely no deterioration on this vehicle anywhere. I keep getting off track here. I've got to concentrate on the uh, aesthetics on the outside here. The trim is just as sweet as can be, and there's no marks where anybody's painted it, anybody's uh, done any touch-up that I can tell. It's just as nice an original paint job as you can find. Fender lip molding. Believe it or not, there are no dings in that. Fit from the uh, front fender to the door, to the cowl area, to the hood. There's no way that you could get that any better than it is. And the paint on this car is nice. Uh, again, I, there's a brush touch here, a little brush touch here. I don't feel anything there. Some stone chips down along the bottom here I can feel. Split post Mopar mirror. Look on eBay, see what those cost to find these split post of Mopar mirrors that are original yet. Original wiper arms and I'm going to call them original blades. I think they are the original blades for the car too. Trim around the front window. Really nice. No dents, absolutely nothing. Tinted windshield. This car has tinted glass from what I can see all around. It's tinted everywhere. The dashboard itself for transitions to the base of the windshield is as nice as you will ever find on any vehicle. And you'll see when we go inside, all this trim is real high end. It's all uh, chrome plated. Everything around the base of the windshield, base of the uh, uh, dashboard, and the entire perimeter of every window in this car is going to be lined with uh, chrome trim. Very, very high end. The chrome on the uh, wing mirror, or wing, uh, just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Again, tinted glass. See how nice it is? Tinted. Roof is original paint yet. Um, there's absolutely nothing. I don't see any marks or deviations or anything whatsoever on it. Kind of a weird drip rail they used back then. Instead of a, just on the very edge, they transitioned it up onto the roof and left a little bit of a gap here, about an eighth of an inch all around so the water could run in there and then run out. Kind of a neat setup. Never really noticed that before, but really a high end the way it transitions off of this and goes the whole way around. Window fitment. Find me one better than that one. Wear. Top of the door right on the edge. Having your arm out through the window. No air in these cars. Never were offered with air conditioning or power steering or power brakes either. Again, this uh, trim down the side is just as nice as you'd ever, ever want to find. Original door handle also. A little tiny bit of, again, light scratching on the chrome from usage through the years. Wear on the edge. Brush touch, brush touch. Another brush touch. Look at the fit, though. Totally, totally amazing. You can't see them, but I can feel some brush touches. Like There's one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. Again, through the years, there, there are dents in this car. Those are just brush touches on the paint that I'm pointing out. Back window, the same way. The fitment is just as nice as can be. Has its original molding on it yet. All its original seals. Uh, window seals. You can see it's starting to get some age to it. Uh, it's starting to come apart in a couple places. It's, it's starting to fray. We're leaving it alone. Original window wipes. Never been replaced. A little bit of wear, but you'd never want to replace those guys. It's originality. Okay, door to the quarter panel. Little chips here from on the door edge and on the quarter panel from who knows through the years. Brush touch, brush touch. Huh. Believe it or not, there I had a little bit of wear down here from stones chipping through the years on the edge. But this is all tin. It's not something that's been uh, replaced or, or massaged through the years. The chrome is really exemplary on this car. This is stainless steel, this is chrome. 500 designation in chrome. Again, the sail panel just as nice as you'd ever want to find. 
quarter panel just as nice and straight, brush touch, brush touch. I can feel some light stone chips down along the bottom. Brush touch. Again, the uh, chrome up along the side here just as nice as you ever want to find. This would be impossible to, to find if you were restoring one of these cars. To find trim in this condition that lines up this way. And it's just beautiful the way that everything lines up. The real high end uh, look of this vehicle with all this chrome added to it. Paint worn off the edge the whole way from here to here. Hanging over the trunk through the years, trying to get mom's groceries out. Who knows? Brush touch. Uh, again, originality. Wear here. I don't know why, but there's a little bit of a wear mark on the uh, uh, paint there. Bumper lines up on the back the way it should. This car retains its original spinner hubcaps, which would have been a standard item in 63 for a Polaris 500. When you ordered a 500, you got the best of the best that Dodge offered at that point in time. Um, comparable to uh, an XL uh, Galaxy or a uh, uh, Impala uh, SS Chevy. This car is as nice as you would ever find. 14 inch wheels, the correct style uh, white walls on it. Uh, the trim, the fit, the finish, everything on this driver's side is as nice as you'd ever want to find. Let's go around the back. Okay, rear of our 63 Max Wedge. See the trunk, the way this thing fits is the same as the wood. Uh, this thing's never been disturbed through all these years. It still retains all its original panels, all its originality. Light scratch here, light scratch here. Brush touch. Brush touch. But no dents. No deviations, no dents whatsoever. Absolutely none then. Dodge emblem again on the back. Dodge designation on the back. Look how this lines up. Look how everything on this car still is as straight as it was when Chrysler put this together. Chrome on the back bumper. Luckily, nobody put their feet up on it. Bumperettes in the back. Bumper guards. Another option. Anodized trim around the uh, license plate area. Just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Trim around the taillight section the same way. And a little bit of wear on the chrome here from water running down through the years probably. Same on this side. A little tiny bit. You can hardly notice it, but it's there. Bumper alignment. <laughs> and it's spot on. And you can see that in the video. There is no way you can get that rear bumper to fit any more precise than what you see there now. It has two turn down exhausts. They did not offer chrome exhaust extensions of any type back in that era. These guys were turn downs before the uh, uh, rear bumper, and that's the way they came. Back end of this car is the same as the sides and the front. A few little imperfections in the paint. Alignment is just as nice as you'd want to find. We got one more side. Okay, passenger side, our last side. And look how the fit on this thing is. It's just totally amazing. This is chrome. This is stainless. I believe it's stainless anyway. That's what it looks like, polished stainless. Uh, this trim is just exemplary. Again, all tin. Couple brush touches here, again from being scraped up over. Worn on the edge here, hanging in the trunk, getting mom's groceries out. Brush touch, brush touch. Stone chips on the back here through the years. Amazingly, I haven't found a dent in uh, this wheel lip molding yet. It's just totally amazing. All those years and nobody threw a car door open on it. That's okay. If it's in the Walmart parking lot, you buy the car next week, guaranteed somebody will throw a door open on it. Um, brush touch here. Must have been a little bit of a scratch. There it is. Let me look here. You can't see it, and I can hardly see it. I can feel it, but I really can't tell you it's there, but it is. There's a little tiny bit of a crease here. Uh, I don't even know. You can't see it. You really you have to feel it. You can feel there's a little tiny bit. I'm going to say somebody got close to the garage door at one point and didn't even realize it. Didn't even break the paint because it's not even brush touched there. 
trim around this back window, which I neglected to mention on the other side, is just absolutely flawless. The hat rack, hat shelf, is the original hat shelf. There's no question it does have originality. A little bit of water stain in this corner here, maybe from sweat or something. I don't believe this windshield bleaks or anything. I'm sure it doesn't. Um, vinyl coming loose just a little bit where it rolls up onto that hat shelf for about a foot there. There's a section that really needs to be glued back down, which we'll probably glue it back down. Nobody's ever going to know that we fixed that. 500 designation, again, the chrome is just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Wear back here, somebody must have had the window down, arm out the window. Brush touch, brush touch, brush touch. Again, the drip reel, you're never going to find them any nicer than that. I love how they did this, that's totally amazing. A uh, little bit of a, I don't know what this is, a little tiny bit of a scrape from something that must have got too close to the lawn while we were sitting in the garage. Uh, a little wear mark here and a brush touch. Door edge the same way, brush touched up along the edge. A little tiny bit of a, I don't know what, again, they, they must have done this all at one time when they hit the lawnmower. There's a little tiny bit of a crease here, a little tiny, tiny dent. You can hardly feel it, but there is one here, and then there's this little scrape here. Wear from the arm again, out the window. Again, tinted glass the whole way around this thing. Look at the window fitment. Totally amazing the way this thing seals up and fits. Again, you can't see it in the video, but the uh, uh, weather stripping kind of needs replaced, but it's original. We hate to mess with it. We're really not going to do anything with this car. Uh, we're going to show it to you in its originality. Front windshield. Any place they put a windshield up front? No dense deviations whatsoever on the trim that went around the entire uh, front window in this car. Matching mirror, right hand mirror matching, how about that for 1963? And it is the split post uh, mirror that uh, Chrysler offered. Fitment, quarter panel to the door, look at that, just totally, totally amazing. Wear mark, worn through here at the paint, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, brush touch, I can feel a whole bunch of chips in this thing, brush touch, brush touch, brush touch, brush touch, brush touch, brush touch, Pentastar, way back when yet, original equipment antenna, one more, a little left, let's see if we got a dent in that, little one right here, a little tiny one, I knew it, I had to find one somewhere. And we're back where we started, the Polar designation on the front. A little bit of wear on the sides here from hanging in, changing plugs. 63, max wedge. Um, and we just showed it to you, picked out every little defect that I could find. Uh, this car is original paint. Uh, it's never been molested. It's never been bumped anywhere. It's not had any panels replaced on it. What you see is a 63 Chrysler Max Wedge in its original state. It has the original hubcaps on it. A little bit of a dinghy in the hubcap here. That could be popped out. Another one here from somebody through the years trying to pound one with a rubber hammer and not knowing where to hit it. Um, spinner hubcaps, the chrome on them is still nice as can be. Nice and fresh looking. This car has so much originality. We're not going to mess with it. We're going to sell the car the way you see it here. But we're also going to offer you an option. This car has the original paint, original everything, other than those few little tiny creases that you won't even see in the video. Um, that's the only thing that really needs to be repaired. Other than that, it needs to be sanded down, the trim taken off, and painted. So if you did that, you would have an absolute 100 point original car. Uh, it, it would have no wear marks in the paint, no chips, no marks, no brush touches. So we're going to offer you that option for a little tiny bit more money. We'll even split the cost of a paint job with you. And our guy's going to do an exemplary job for nowhere near what you would think it would cost to do uh, a paint job on a car. This car is a fantastic original car. Um, again, we offered it in an original state. We're showing you everything on it, every little tiny defect that I could pick up. We're going to show an undercarriage video and an interior video, which, by the way, is original too. 
Uh, we have a um, uh, IBM punch card with this car showing its originality. From what I understand, it's one of five that Dodge produced in a Polar 500 in 1963. It's a very, very rare high option car. You've got to remember, you couldn't get air, you couldn't get power steering, you couldn't get power brakes, you couldn't get power windows. You got tinted glass, you got a Polar 500, which is the top of the line model, uh, two door hard top instead of a post uh, sedan. A little bit heavier, but a lot more class to it. A lot of chrome, a lot of trim. I love the way they accent the uh, uh, the, uh, the stripe going down the side, that dark going down the side, the same as uh, uh, Chevy did with their 409, only theirs was a little bit down lower. Fantastic condition car. Uh, you're not going to find another one. We do have paperwork with the car. We are going to get a uh, Govio report with it. We're going to get uh, him to write us up a uh, report with the car. There's a little bit of history that we gained with the car whenever we got it. Um, it's a fantastic car. Uh, I tried to show you every little defect that I could in it. Uh, we encourage everyone to come down and take a look at it. I would love to show somebody this car and spend some time with it because it's one of my very favorite cars of all time. And, and spend the time and show them the vehicle, you know, the inside, the engine compartment, go for a ride, put it up on a rack, show them the undercarriage, and show them that there is absolutely no perforation, no body work ever done on this car. It's just as you see it here, original. Uh, it's available here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, it's not a cheap car, but you're not going to find a duplication of it. This is one of five that was produced, and, and hopefully the other four are still in existence. Take a look at it on your Hangsters website. This is a little longer video than we usually do, um, but we really had to point out every little tiny defect on this car because we did not paint it. We came very close to painting this car and then I decided to leave it in its original state and offer it to the public that way and the buyer can at that point decide whether he wants it painted or he wants to keep it in its original state. And there it is, 63 Max Wedge, the real guy. Okay, interior of one of my favorite cars, 63 Max Wedge. Headliner, still the original headliner with the original metal bows that hold it up into position. Look at the trim around these windows, and this is entirely around this vehicle, the whole way around the windows, including the backlight on this thing. Everything is chrome-plated the whole way around the base, the whole way around the top. Everything is just real high-end, the whole way around the uh, side windows. Original sun visors on it, still held together, um, no deterioration whatsoever. Side panels in the back are nice and clean and clear. The uh, hat rack, which I mentioned, is original and nice as could possibly be. Um, the interior in this car is just exemplary. The uh, armrests are still original. They're not replaced. Uh, original molded ones from the factory from Mopar. Carpeting along the bottoms, uh, including the back seat has carpeting on the base of the uh, uh, side panels. Armrests in the back. Two-tone interior, if you noticed. It's like a mauve and a cream. A beautiful color combination. It really accentuates the outside of this vehicle when you open the doors. It, it really just, with this two-tone interior, and everything is two-toned, even the steering wheel, cream on top and like a mauve color on the bottom. Horn ring just as nice as you'd ever want to find. All the chrome is still nice and intact on it. Top of the steering wheel is cracked. Um, you could fix it, again, just the same as the brush touches outside, but we're leaving it alone because of the originality. Nothing has been modified in this car, nothing has been repaired in this car, it's just the way it was when it left the factory in 63. Uh, little console with a uh, lid that opens. Trash tray, how about that? Um, back seat, there's no wear whatsoever. Carpeting has a little bit of fade to it, even has carpeting on the back of the seats. Uh, the window cranks, the Door actuators uh, are just all as nice as they were in 63. The chrome is just exemplary on them. All your little Dodge emblems, everything is just as nice as you could ever expect it to be. I, this car is just a, a, an absolute diamond of a car. Day-night mirror in it. The dash is nice and clean and crisp. All the gauges are nice and clear. Uh, the uh, plastic on the uh, face of all the uh, gauges, which it does have full instrumentation, by the way. Punch button automatic. These things were such a neat thing. Choke, and it's written on here, choke. 
manual choke for this guy. Those carburetors, whenever they're cold, this engine's cold, you have to choke it some. Uh, it's an amazing car to drive. Uh, it has a lot of, um, obviously, a lot of pep. The uh, aluminum at the base of the uh, dashboard is totally undisrupted. It's not dinged up or marked up. No one's tried to put any aftermarket radio in it. It still retains its original AM uh, Mopar radio. The padded part of the dash, which way back then, that was a real neat option. Uh, very few companies offered padded dashes back in that era. This one has it. Speaker for the front. Uh, there's no deterioration whatsoever on the uh, vinyl uh, or the metal part of the dash. The chrome is just as nice and clean and clear as you'd ever want to find. All the buttons and the trim and, and every knob on this vehicle is just as nice as you'd uh, ever hope to find on a vehicle. Padding in the seats is still nice and firm. The um, rubber moldings, your rubber seals are starting to go away. Gee, I wonder why. They're only 60 years old. Um, fantastic condition uh, for their age. The original uh, rope uh, seals that go up and down around the uh, um, windshield pillars is still original and nice. And again, you can see the trim on, si on the inside of this. By the way, the glass, there's no marks on this glass anywhere. It doesn't have any marks on the side glass, the rear light, or the windshield. It's all tinted, it all matches, and it's not scraped up or uh, chipped up from uh, someone trying to uh, do something to it through the years, maybe sandblast something whenever cars are being restored. This one had none of that done to it. It does have seat belts in the front. Um, I don't remember Dodge having seat belts back then, but it was possible that they, uh, oh, a lighter too. Trash tray for the rear passenger. That's neat. Um, this car is as original as you will ever find one. The interior is just as exemplary as the outside of this vehicle. All original. I don't see anything that's been uh, disrupted or replaced in it. That combination is really neat. That mauve and cream with like a um, light brown carpeting in it. Um, this is nice as it gets. We're going to go for a ride and show you the undercarriage and then I think we're done with it. Let's see, we are in our 63 Max Wedge. Really neat car. Can't really see it, but this steering wheel isn't round. It's an oval shape. Check that out. To put it in park, there's a lever for it. You put it in park, and it automatically snaps it into neutral. So if you're in drive, you have to take it out of this, push it in drive, and to put it in park, you just do that, and it puts it into neutral and uh, puts the uh, uh, park on it. Um, okay, temperature gauge is coming up, as you can see. Gas gauge is working. Alternator is functioning as it should. The um, wipers, let's see if the wipers work. And they do not. Wipers do not function. Definitely got to address that. Horn definitely works. How about that? 1963. All transistor radio. I make believe it came from you. Band sign. Okay, so we got everything working except the wipers. We got to figure out why that's not functioning as it should. Okay, left turn signal is working. You can see. Uh, right turn signal is working just the way it should. Uh, I think we got everything working except the uh, wipers. I guess just don't drive it in the rain. Let's see. Hey, park off. Drive. Let's go for a ride. How about that? It's 1963 all over again. Wow, neat. The steering went off kilter a little bit. Could be that it feels like the left, no, it's going straight. It's just that the steering wheel itself is just a little bit off center. Might have to adjust that. Just a 
as sweet as could possibly be. We got so much traffic out here. Speed week. We're underneath our 1963 Max Wedge 426 Dodge Polara 500. Really, really rare car. A very rare car. Um, original engine, Max Wedge, not a 440. Um, you can see the uh, original paint is still on the engine, still on the oil pan. No one spray canned anything. No one's done anything to this motor cosmetically. Any paint that's chipped off, we're leaving alone. We're not uh, spray canning anything on it. The only thing that uh, we did do to neaten this up a little bit is, and the exhaust system itself um, is solid. It, it's nice solid tin everywhere. Uh, these are the original manifold pipes that came with this car. Uh, the car shows 43,000 miles on it at this point, I believe, and I believe that to be the actual miles uh, on the uh, vehicle. But Jeff uh, neatened up the exhaust just to give it a little bit of a contrast instead of just having a little bit of, of uh, brown uh, surface uh, uh, oxidation on the uh, pipes now they're silver so it did neaten it up a little bit. Uh, original starter on the vehicle uh, tie rod ends everything the steering system is nice and tight on the car no leaks on the steering box uh, whatsoever drum brakes in the front they didn't do discs back then uh, it does have the original cast iron exhaust manifolds on it with the original style manifold pipes that came with this car and these are three inch pipes from Mopar back in 1963 yet you can see the drop downs and the fenders still have all the originality from 1963 yet. They have the original sound deadener splatter type uh, coating that Chrysler put on these cars. It was not a rust preventative. It was a sound deadener material that they uh, installed. It had uh, uh, asphalt and uh, some fibrous material in it. Gave it a real thick gloppy uh, uh, finish that uh, it actually did help uh, uh, stop any uh, rust or corrosion, but the main purpose was to uh, deaden the sound underneath the car so you didn't have that dead sound to it. it um, the, uh, the subframes were just totally undisrupted. You can see that there's no jack marks on them, there's no dents, no dings, uh, all originality. still has the original overspray paint on the insides, uh, the firewall on the insides of the uh, subframes underneath. Uh, the drop downs for the uh, fenders in the front, which are tin, no one's made any attempt to jack it up through the years. Uh, you can see the engine has really no leaks whatsoever. There's a, one kind of a drop there, but I know we just changed oil and filter in it. So that's probably why it's there. You can see it's not leaking the uh, transmission pan the same way. And this is a punch button um, torque flight transmission from Mopar in that era. Very, very strong transmission. A lot of guys still use these uh, uh, for racing. They're, they're a great transmission. The pipes that came with this car are three inch and they do have a set of dumps that go out the side so theoretically the exhaust is a tuned exhaust system and you have your headers which are a tri-y design and go into a three inch pipe that goes straight out of the back. Um, now there's a crossover pipe to help quiet it down and even out the exhaust pulses on this thing and then it goes into two and a half inch pipes uh, that go off of the three inch pipe. Uh, they might be two and a quarter, I'm not really sure without taking a uh, mic and uh, mic in them, but uh, they're two and a half, two and a quarter. Um, the original drive shaft still intact, no leaks on the tail shaft area, no leaks on the transmission or on the actuator. It does retain its original cooling lines that go to the uh, radiator in the front. You can see the K member even doesn't have any uh, jack marks on it or dents or anything, no disruption whatsoever. Uh, even the uh, oil pump still retains all its original paint on it yet. Uh, great looking car underneath the front of it here. We're trying to work our way back through it and I keep jumping all over the place. Uh, heavy duty torsion bar suspension for the front. The um, original parking brake still functional uh, and intact. Again, you can see the um, undercoating uh, sound deadener material that they splattered on these cars uh, through the years is still all there and just totally undisrupted. 
You can see the original rocker panels. There is absolutely no rust, and I mean no rust, on this car anywhere, nor was there ever at any point. Uh, original drop downs that go to the uh, rocker panel areas are still there. All your original pinch wells are still intact on it. Your drain holes the same way. Uh, everything on this car, we're halfway back through it, and I mean absolutely everything is just the way it was in 1963 when this car was released by Chrysler. No one's made any attempt to replace anything or do anything structurally on the car. Uh, it's an original car. It's a fantastic piece of history here. Other half. Okay, second half of our uh, Max Wedge Polara 500. Uh, original style, uh, under chassis mufflers that would have been the original equipment on this car in 63. You can see the subframes in the back are just as the ones in the front, absolutely, totally undisrupted. Um, could not find a nicer looking undercarriage in this. There's a little mark in the uh, undercoating here, the sound under material, but it doesn't appear to be dented. It just seems to be an indent in the uh, uh, sound under material itself. Uh, the exhaust pipes that go up over the uh, uh, rear differential, I'm going to call them, well, let's call them two inch. I don't know why, it just looks like they might be two and an eighth, but we'll call them two inch. Eight and three quarter, heavy duty Mopar rear end. These things are pretty much indestructible. The only thing you're going to find stronger is a 9 inch Ford or a Dana 9 and 3 quarter, which nobody has been ever, ever been able to break. Multi leaf springs all stacked in the back just the way they should be seven on this side, six on that side. Torque bias uh, compensation. It does have a set of aftermarket air shocks in the back. I think the original shocks are still in the front. Let me look. Now they've been replaced. So there's new shocks in the front. But there are a set of uh, air shocks in the back to help compensate to uh, um, let you have the rear end lift or the stance on this vehicle that you, uh, uh, you decide you want. Um, drum brakes in the back. Original gas tank still retains its original sound deadener material still on it. A little bit chipped off here. and You can see that the, uh, the tank is all original, original tin and everything. Your subframe sections that uh, transition toward the rear still have the original sound deadener on them the same way. The floor pans are totally undisrupted on this vehicle. The drop downs in the uh, quarter panels on this thing are absolutely 1963 undisrupted, unmessed with. They got the little tabs on them yet and uh, we'll get Devin to take some good high resolution pictures so that you can see the drop downs in the quarters and the floor pans in the uh, underneath of this vehicle, the total undercarriage so that you can see the originality that this guy still retains from 1963. This is a very rare car. It's a it's a once in a lifetime find uh, to have a car that is 100% original in pretty much every way. I mean, we got a few dinghies and marks and scrapes, and I think we explained that we're going to go ahead and sell the car the way it is. If the customer decides at the point of purchase that he wants to go ahead and have the car done in a show quality. Uh, type paint job, uh, we're going to go ahead and do that for them. You know, we'll charge them a little bit more, we'll split the cost for them, whatever we need to do. Uh, but that'll be his decision whether to keep it in its original state and retain all the originality of the car or go ahead and uh, do the outside and, and fix the worn out paint places and the stone chips and the brush touches. But the undercarriage, you're not going to do anything with. Original three inch pipes. You can see the system that was designed by Chrysler back then for these Max Wedge cars. It was a purpose-built vehicle. Uh, it is available here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach and I guarantee you you can't find another one available anywhere on the internet that equals this vehicle. Take a look at it. Hangsters Daytona Beach.